Hey, how's it going? Um, so in class this week, I mentioned um, using the fget function as a way to read input, particularly in PA1 when you're asking the user how many sticks they want to take. Um, and um, I think you touch on fgets in 121, but it, it's been a while for some people. So I wanted to just do a quick overview of what fgets is and why we want to use it. And so basically, you know, the deal is we want to get input from the user and then do something with that input. And this is actually a two-step process. The first step is actually pulling in the input from the user. So you say, how many sticks do you want? They're going to type, you know, the character 3 and hit the Enter key. We need to grab that information that they type. So that's the input part. And then we need to interpret that input. For example, if they hit the ASCII character 3, we need to treat that as the number 3 and remove 3 sticks from the pile. And that part we call parsing. So there's two steps here, inputting and parsing. And what we want to do is do those separately. And I've made the comment you should not use scanf. And the problem with scanf is it does input and parsing simultaneously. So I have some test code here, which I've just called test1.c. And basically, um, I'm going to ha have a program here that basically lets you type in a number and prints out twice that number. So we've done this this exercise before. But this has some error checking, right? So um, I'm going to use scanf, which I'm telling you not to use, to uh, read in an integer, save it as a number. And um, I'm going to save the result from scanf over here. Now, I've told you that if scanf succeeds, if you give it a valid integer, result will be equal to 1. And that'll tell me, hey, you know, I got a number. So this is, this is a common loop structure that we'll have. I'll set a variable to 1, which says I'm still waiting for correct input. And then I have a while loop, which says while waiting. And this is the same thing as saying while waiting equals 1. So initially, I'm going to go through this loop at least once. I'll do my scanf. I'll save the result from scanf in this variable. And I'll check to see if it's equal to 1. If it is, the scanf was successful. I'll set waiting to 0, which means when I go back to the top of my loop, I will exit. And then I'll come down here and I'll print out twice the number. But if result is not 1, it means the user typed something other than a number. And so now I'm going to print a message saying that's not a valid number. Try again. And now when I go back to the top of my loop, waiting will still be 1 because I didn't change it. And it'll do the scanf again. And theoretically, this should work great. But there's a problem. So let me go ahead and run this. And, you know, if I type in a number, it prints out twice the number. That's fine. If I put in negative a number, it prints out twice the number. That's fine. But if I put in something that's not a number, like, huh, my screen explodes, right? And this is something that will happen sometimes to students when they're writing their program. And this can cause, you know, lots of panic. And you think, oh, my whole program's broken. You delete all your code and things like that. So first of all, if this is happening, how do you get out of it? Hold down Control and press C that exits the program. All right, so let me make a new version of this. And let me show you how we can use fgets to stop this kind of behavior from happening. So I'm going to make a temporary character array. I'm just going to call it temp. And I'll just make it big enough for a reasonable input line, 120 characters. And now, at the top of my loop, instead of using scanf, I'm going to use a combination of fgets and sscanf. So first I'm going to say fgets, and fgets takes three arguments. The name of your character array, the length of your character array, and then if you want to read from, from the keyboard or from a file standard in, right? So this is, this is pretty much boilerplate, exactly what you're going to use, but whatever your character array is called, put it here, whatever the size is here. And now, instead of saying scanf, I'm going to say sscanf, and I'm going to add a first argument, which is that character array. So these two statements go together. F gets reads from standard in, that's usually our keyboard, up to 120 characters and saves them inside temp. And then sscanf says, okay, look in that array of characters, that string, for an integer, and save the result in num. And that's all I've changed. I added an fgets and I did an sscanf. But now if I compile this and I run it, well, if I put in a number that's not a number, it'll just say not a valid number, try again. And when I finally put in a number, it 
succeeds in scanning it, converts it to an integer, I double it and print it out. And this, this will work nicely if I just hit enter, it'll say not a valid number. If I type something followed by a number, it'll say not a number and so on. And so, so that's our goal is to, to break that, that input and parsing operation into a pair of steps. And so F gets lets us do the input and S scan F lets us do the conversion. A um, couple of other details here. So um, when we want to know if there's anything extra after a valid integer, we need to do something in addition to this because if I type 23 ha ha, it'll just take the 23, double it, give me 46, and say we're all good. Why is that? Because scanf stops as soon as it's finished finding an integer. So if my input string temp is 23 ha ha, this scan still succeeds. It sees the 23, converts that to an integer, returns a result of one saying I converted one thing. So this is where we do that extra trick that we talked about on, on the beginning of the course, um, where I have an extra character array, and I scan looking for a percent D followed by a string like this. So now my scan is saying look for an integer followed by anything that's not an integer. And if that's what it finds, it'll return a result of two and it'll register as not being successful. So now if I compile this and I say test two and I say 23 ha ha, it says not a valid number. If I say 23 point, it's not a valid number. If I say 23, that's valid and we get our 46. So this is, this is the trick we're going to use again and again in this course when we want to input an integer from the user, we're going to use F gets to read in the input and then we're going to use S scan F and if we want to make sure it's exactly an integer we'll have this this percent D percent S set up. And that's that's basically it. And it it works pretty well and my general rule is if S scan F likes it, we like it. So if I type in, you know, a bunch of spaces followed by 23, that's totally legal. If I type in a 23 followed by a bunch of spaces, that's totally legal. If I type in a 23 followed by a bunch of spaces followed by anything else, that's not legal. All right, so that's basically the, the deal with F gets. Um, the other thing with F gets is make sure that um, your character array that you're reading into is big enough to hold whatever input you expect. Don't try to make it, you know, one or two if you're only expecting one or two characters. Always make it bigger. Make it at least, you know, 16 or 32 or something like that. And make sure your second argument tells you how big that should be. Um, all right, that's all I got. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.